So this is fun. How do I get this up inside the hole? That's what that's what he said. Uh -huh. Hi guys, it's your friendly garage dweller Sarah here with a video on Mr. Dose. For all you new people that don't know what Mr. Dose is and you're wondering what's wrong with me right now, I'm fine. I'm just getting over a cold and Mr. Dose is my Toyota MR2 project car. <laughs> There's a link up above, i will get you caught up. Everybody else, I'm a little bit nervous about today's video. I'm going to be tackling something that I need to fix before I can drive this car. I should have fixed it a while ago, but that's whatever. Taco meter, taco meter issue, taco meter. soft. It's like a little caterpillar attached to it. I had to get a screwdriver. So before I finish turning this apart all the way, I want to show you real quick why I'm taking this apart and why this video is happening. Oh, come on, start. Because this is a common problem that I've seen a lot, especially with the MR2s and cars of this era. So hopefully you guys can take something away from this and apply it to your own car. Yeah. So if this were accurate, it would not be idling at 250 RPM. See? <laughs> that is clearly a lot higher than 1000 RPM where I'm revving. So if I were to bring this to redline, which I'm not going to do because the engine's still kind of cold, it would only go to about 3000 RPM and redline is just over 7,000. So the taco meter is not accurately metering the tacos. And I'll get a little bit more in depth on this in a second. But basically what I need to do is take out the tachometer from the gauge cluster, and on the back of there, there is t uh, two 10 microfarad capacitors. Oh geez, Louise. I got it. I think. Yes, it's like a robotic crab that I need to replace. Now likely I think I just have one that is bad because if they're both bad, my tachometer would not be working at all. Ooh, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Can I do this without? Heck yeah, dude. I don't have to drop the steering column, I don't think. And that means I have to solder a printed circuit board. There's that one. Yeah, buddy, I did it. So this is gonna be tricky. I'm a little bit nervous. What? Is he alive? There's a bug in my gauge cluster. I don't know how he got in there. So this could be a cheap fix to an expensive problem. Because essentially, I'm gonna use like a dollar or something worth of electronic doodads from an electronic parts store to fix a gauge cluster that I'm sure if I looked on eBay, these things are probably well over $100. These lenses, if you've never worked with one of these lenses on a gauge cluster before, they are super brittle. They scratch ultra easy. Like you can't even clean these things with certain um, types of microfiber because it'll scratch and swirl them and make it so you can't see through them. Like the slightest little bit of pressure with one of these on the lens, it'll spider, it'll crack right through there. Yeah, no pressure. No pressure, Sarah. I think I got it. Now that the lens is off, something that you guys might have noticed earlier when I was showing you revving the car up, that my boost gauge right here at the top was acting kind of erratic and showing weird readings when I started the car. And that's because the non-turbo gauge cluster has a voltmeter here for the battery. However, this car, since it was swapped to a turbo car, they took the gauge cluster apart previously, whoever owned the car before me, 
and swapped in this dial from a turbo gauge cluster. So it's partially wired correctly that it reads boost when the car is running, but when you just have the key in the accessory position and there's power going to the gauge cluster, it shows battery voltage somehow on this boost gauge. The way I'm doing this is I put my little pry tool in here and I twist it to put tension on the two halves of the gauge cluster together. And then I use my flathead screwdriver to push down on this half. Actually, don't even have to do it on this side. I'm gonna twist it right here to apply pressure, push down on the tab, and it should separate. Same over here. So that is all free. Undo these brackets. Use that. Put screw back in here. There's that. Oh, this one's being a little treat. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. You have to have extreme patience when you're working on stuff like this. All right. So here we go. Denzo. Now to get the taco meter out. So you have to be super careful because these washers are actually attached to the copper on here because they're so old. So you don't want to tear this uh, sheet right here. It's kind of like a plastic foil. It's not actually like a circuit card. Oh, that's all holding it in there. There you go, tachometer. Wait, I gotta take a break, right? How? This is a taco meter, measures tacos. This isn't funny anymore, I'll stop. All right, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm gonna show you what I have to do. Now, this is kind of nerve wracking. See these things right here that look like little miniature beer cans? These are capacitors, which, there's two of them. There's one here, and there's one up here towards the front. They're like purple and they have a little silver stripe. The silver stripe indicates direction of polarity, which is key when putting the new ones back in there, I need to ensure that they're put in with the correct polarity or else this will not work. So if you see right here on the new capacitor, there's a little stripe on the front. It's really hard to get on camera. All of the capacitors also have a leg that is shorter than the other that indicates polarity. So the shorter leg is towards the stripe. So that way it'll help you align this when you're sliding this into the new circuit card. So what I now need to do is I'm going to have to heat up the solder on the back side of these capacitors and then use a pair of needle nose pliers and pull the capacitor off of the circuit card. Now to do this, ideally I would use a solder sucker which would absorb the solder once it gets wet instantly up into the solder sucker so we don't make a mess on here. <laughs> I just wrapped the entire tachometer in aluminum foil and cut out a small access to the two points that I need to desolder. And this will help dissipate heat. I'm gonna use a tiny bit of flux on here also, as well as protect the entire thing in case I accidentally drop a little bit of wet, molten hot solder onto the plastic. I have my hair in a ponytail so I don't catch it on fire. That would be a pretty pissed off Sarah if that happened. I have this piece of bare wire right here that I'm gonna use to try to help absorb some of the solder, since I don't have a solder sucker. <laughs> Got the wire stuck to it. It's working though, it's getting it up. There we go, there we go. Yeah, dude. Heck yeah, dude. I got it out of there. That was not easy. I probably put a little bit too much more heat than I should have, but it's okay because this one's bad. 25V 10 microfarads. Farads. This is the new guy. It says 105 degrees Celsius on it. I don't know if that's the temperature in which this thing pops. I have no idea, but I gotta protect it from heat. So I'm gonna try to wrap it in tin foil while I do this. Well, this is fun. How do I get this up inside the hole? That's what, that's what he said. Uh.
Ta-da! My little miniature heat sink. I used the alligator clip and some aluminum foil and I clipped it together on the end of the capacitor. So that way it helps dissipate the heat. In theory, probably not good enough. <laughs> oh well. All right, here goes nothing. We have a little bit of wet solder in there and call us Dunsky. beer can is now in its new home. Good and secure, just like new. I looked out too, I don't think I got it that hot. So, my little heat sink. Good job. All right, one more to go. I think I'm gonna skip out on the gloves so I don't melt them to my hands. Polarity faces this thing. this thing works. Hopefully that's what was wrong with it. I believe it was. So and either way, I just showed you how to replace the capacitors on a gauge cluster for an MR2. Now you know. The more you know, the better. Doesn't this look like a burnt tip on a titanium exhaust? Hmm. I'm getting hungry and loopy. The moment of truth. Time to stick this thing in Mr. Dose and see if I have a working tachometer for the first time ever since I've owned this car. No pressure. Man, I really hope this works. So nervous. All right. The moment of truth. Will Mr. Dose have a working tachometer? I'm, I'm legit like super nervous right now. Because if I just did all this work for this YouTube video and it doesn't work, I'm going to look like an idiot. Well, at least, I, at least I showed you something. I showed you what could happen. I don't know. See the boost gauge jump up? I'm guessing that's where around 12 volts would be. Alright, here goes. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. I can't believe it works. I'm so excited it works. Something strange going on with the boost gauge though. It just like randomly jumped up for no reason at idle and it went back down. That was kind of strange. Do to do. Heck yeah, dude. I now finally have a working tachometer in the MR2 for the first time. So now I can drive it and know where the real red line is. Kind of like an initial D when he gets the new engine in the Hashiroku and he doesn't really know what red line is because it still has a stock tachometer. I haven't been watching too much initial D, evidently. So um, yeah, I guess that's the end of this video and I will see you guys soon with another. Bye.